This video is going to show you how to operate the CHEM DWA-1000 wheel alignment system. So first things first, we'll go ahead and pull the car onto the lift and stop when the front two wheels are centered onto the turn plates. Next, exit the vehicle and place the wheel chocks behind any wheel you choose. After you do that, go ahead and place the car in neutral without engaging any parking brake. So after the car is placed in neutral, we'll go ahead and grab our wheel clamp and place it in its designated location. Now before mounting the wheel clamp onto the vehicle, pay close attention to the tag on the sensor itself because it's going to tell you where this head belongs onto the vehicle. If you place it onto the wrong spot, you will get the wrong results. Okay. Next what we'll do is identify which pin holes we're going to use here. We have an inner and outer position here. The inner ones are for the smaller diameter wheels. The outer ones are for the larger sizes up to a 24 inch. Okay, it's very easy to place these pins. All you have to do is push in and rotate. And it has a safety pin that's gonna keep it from popping out. Okay, once we've got those placed, you wanna make sure if you're using the outer ones, use all four of the outer ones. If you're using the inner ones, use all four inner positions. Do not mix and match. Okay, next what we'll do is put the pins into the bottom between the tire and the rim. And using this knob up here at the top, you can open and close the range here. Just point the pins towards the center of the clamp. Okay, and close down. And what we'll do is lock the clamp onto the wheel and you should not be able to pull off of it, okay? Another key important thing is you might have to push the clamp at certain points so that the actual red tip protection is right up against the rim. Now that's gonna prevent any damage to the wheel so you don't have to worry about that. Next, what we'll do is using these bungee cords here, there are an additional fail safe to keep the sensor from falling off at any point in time. So all you have to do is place them like so onto the clamp and stretch them out and grab any one of the spokes. Okay, after we do that, we'll go ahead and turn the clamp on by using the power button here. Okay, all you do is push and hold it and that should turn the clamp on. Now, once the head's been turned on, what we'll do is secure it to the clamp using this knob here. One thing to note is we don't want to go fully tight with it because we want to be able for the heads to free hang and not rotate when we do our run out procedure here in a second. So what we'll do is just back it up a quarter turn, leave them a little loose, and we want the light to be green in the built-in leveling system on the head here. Once we've done that, we'll go ahead and mount the rest of the three onto the vehicle. Once we have our wheel clamps mounted in the right location, we go ahead and open our alignment software and we're here at the home page. Up here at the top right corner, we have our battery indicators that indicate that all four of the heads are currently turned on and have sufficient power levels. Up here at the top left, we have our 2X, which allows us to do a two wheel alignment only. Okay, if we want to cancel that, we'll just click this red X, but that's what that's used for. And then we have our fast. This is used for if you want to perform a generic alignment without inputting the vehicle information. But for this application, we'll go ahead and click this next button or F6 to proceed. Okay, here we have our database. Okay, it's in alphabetical order from Acura down to Volvo. We'll go ahead and select our current vehicle. Okay, this is our make on the left side. Our model is gonna be here in the center. So we'll go ahead and select the model. And lastly, the right side, we're going to be to select the year. Now, a tip here to keep you from having to search through this whole list using this year minus and year plus button here on the left hand side. We'll go ahead and click the year plus and you'll see this little black number appear down here at the bottom. Currently it's 2000. So what we'll do is navigate to the current car we're working with using your mouse and it's going to filter out every option that does not apply to that year. Okay, so lastly, we'll go ahead and select the configuration for this car. In this box, you'll see different things such as four wheel drive, two wheel drive, RPO codes for axles, and things such as sport suspension. So go ahead and select the right configuration for this car. Okay, we'll double click. And now we have our factory specs here on screen. Here we have a couple of different information such as our wheelbase in inches. So we have 63 inches from left side to right side from center of the wheel and 111 from front to rear. We could also select our wheel size here using the plus and minus. So we'll go ahead and select that. And then we have our factory specs. Now this isn't how this car currently is. This is what the manufacturer recommends the specs be at for this car to be considered aligned, such as tow, camber angle, caster, 
SAI, which stands for steering axis inclination, 20 degrees on toe out, in max internal steering, max external steering. The blue line divides the front from the rear specs, so then we have toe and camber for the rear. Okay, once we've inputted our wheel dimensions in here, we'll go ahead and proceed to the next step using this next arrow down here at the bottom left. Okay, this brings us to our runout page. Now here we have multiple options. Main thing here is either a lifted or a rolling runout. Now there will be different reasons that you'll have to use either or. The fastest option is a rolling runout. Now this is only available if you have a four post lift or a scissor lift. Now there will be instances where you have to use a lifted runout such as aligning on a two post lift or having a long wheelbase on a short lift. But we'll go ahead and start and show you how to use a ground rolling runout. So, using these little status indicators on here on the left hand side, we'll go ahead and select 90 degree ground. And that'll actually give us this symbol here. This red dot indicates that that black knob should be at 12 o'clock as we mentioned earlier. So next we'll continue by walking over to any one of the heads and following the procedures. Okay, so next what we'll do is lock our head into position so it doesn't move. And with the green light being on, we'll go ahead and hold the OK button for two seconds, just long enough for the screen to change. Okay, once we've done that, we'll get our down arrow indicating to go ahead and roll back. Now, if you notice, the red dot has shifted from the 12 o'clock position to about the three o'clock. So what we'll do is rotate the car 90 degrees backwards. Once we've done that, We'll go ahead, again, lock our head in the position so our head doesn't tilt while we place the OK. And once it's tightened, we'll push and hold OK again for another two seconds, just long enough for the arrow to change, and now we have our forward arrow. Go ahead and unlock the head and roll the car forward. Until you reach the wheel chalk where you started, we'll go ahead and lock the head back down. And if you notice, the red dot is at the 12 o'clock position again. So what we'll do is push and hold OK for a third time and if done correctly, you should see a green check mark right in the center of the screen. Now, when switching to a lifted runout, we have two options here as well, 180 degrees or the more common 3 by 90. So we'll select that one. And if you notice, our indicators have changed here on the screen. We now have an icon next to each wheel. That's because after our car is lifted, we're gonna to have to go to each wheel individually and hit OK a total of three times per wheel to complete the runout. Now this is gonna take you a little bit more time, but as we mentioned earlier, it will be necessary if you're aligning on a two post lift or have a long wheelbase on a short lift. Okay, once we've done that, we'll get a check mark next to each wheel telling us we've successfully performed run out per wheel. And we get a couple reminders here on screen. First one telling us to remove the pins from the front and rear slip plates. Make sure that all four wheel clamps are at the 12 o'clock position. Of course, we'll lower the vehicle so that the wheels are making contact with the lift and settle the suspension if need be. After we've done that, we'll go ahead and click the next button and we're gonna get the warning and telling us and asking if it, the vehicle is lifted. We're gonna check that it's not. And now it's telling us to start the car to pressurize the brake system if necessary and to settle the suspension and install the brake depressor. We'll go ahead and do that and then proceed to the next step. Okay, after performing our run out, we'll go ahead and get to this page here. And what the machine is asking us to do is align, level, and lock the heads. So what we have to do here is walk around the vehicle individually to each wheel and make sure that the sensors themselves are leveled and we'll know that if the green light is lit up only on that one. And using the knobs, we'll go ahead and tighten them up. So we'll go ahead and do that now and the machine will automatically advance to the caster swing page. 
After aligning, leveling, and locking our heads, we'll arrive here at our caster swing page. Now, before beginning this process, you need to make sure you pull your pins from the turn plates before starting this step. Now, by default, 10 degrees will be selected, but we also have a couple different options here on the left-hand side, such as 10 degrees, 20 degrees, or fast steer. Fast steer being another word for max steering, okay? Factory will be selected 10, but it's really up to the operator to select at which point he wants to take a reading. The important thing is that you do both sides. So for instance, when we steer to the left, as the machine is indicating, we'll go far enough to where both arrows are lined up, at which place we'll hold the steering wheel. And at that point, the machine is gonna prompt us to steer to the right side. We'll steer to the right, again, holding when the arrows are prompting us to do so, and then back to the center, and that will complete the caster swing procedure. Now, after performing our caster swing, we'll arrive here on our spec page on how this car currently is. So this blue line, again, divides the rear from the front. And now we have our values on this left-hand side of our database, which is from factory, how this car should be to be considered aligned versus what's on the right of how this car actually is. A couple important things here is the machine flags you in red to tell you what's out of tolerance, such as our toe on the front, total toe here, and our SAI, as well, which again is for our steering axis inclination, which is a value if you combine caster, camber, and tow, gives you this value right here that needs to be adjusted as well. And TOOT -O -T stands for tow out on turn. Okay, we also have our dimensions page up here at the top left. If we click there, we have what's called our setback, which is going to be our difference between the left and right hand side, and this is going to be in inches. So we're in the thousands of an inch, very minute here. But this screen is very handy to know if the actual frame itself is possibly bent. So if you have a, like again, crooked frame, it's gonna mess with your alignment. So that is some pretty important information to know here. And then we have our thrust angle as well here in the center. You can print this page if necessary. Otherwise, we'll click this back arrow to back out. We also have the option to print this screen here or our notes right in here. We can input things such as our name, license plate, the mileage, work order ID, technician, and any notes that you may have noticed and want to include on the printout, you can use the keyboard and include any of that information here. Once we're done, we click our back arrow, okay? And we can proceed to the next step by clicking the next button down here at the bottom left. The machine's gonna make sure that all the heads are aligned, leveled, and locked. Okay, now once we get to this page, we now have our live rear measurements. A couple things going on here. As indicated, we're doing the rear. Okay, I'll always start with that first. And then we have a couple values here, such as camber, toe, and our thrust angle down here at the bottom. Now we have a couple different numbers here as well. The smaller numbers here are is our actual range, our minimum, maximum, and standard preferred here. Now the big number is where we are on this spectrum, okay? So right now we're at negative one. Here is our range, so we're in value between a negative 40 and negative 1.90, so that's okay. Same thing for the rest of the values. We also have this freeze button up here at the top left, which is commonly known as a jack and raise mode. And what that is, if necessary to lift the wheels off of the lift, what we would do is click on that, the values freeze. Now this is necessary, again, when you're going to be lifting the car up off of the suspension to do any adjustments, you need to do this before lifting up. So we lock in our values, okay, they're frozen, software indicates to go up. Once we go up at working height, we go ahead and push it one more time, unfreezes it, gives us a range symbol. We're clear to go ahead and adjust. Once we've adjusted it, before we come back down, we'll click freeze for a third time. Software indicates with a down arrow to come back down. Wheels make contact with the lift, and then we'll click freeze for a fourth time, unlocks, and now our values stay the same. And they shouldn't bounce around, okay? We also have our photo. If we need to make reference to any of our illustrations here on how to make adjustments, we could go through those as well. And this type button here allows us to see camber, toe for both front and rear at the same time, okay? Once we made any necessary corrections to the rear, we can move forward with the next and go to the front. Okay, system's gonna make sure our heads are still aligned, leveled, and locked. And at this point, if necessary, we can start the vehicle.
to pressurize the brake system and we need to sensor, level, and lock the steering wheel. So we'll go ahead and apply the other depressor in place. Okay, once we get here, now we have our front values. Similar screen, but as well indicates front as indicated up here at the top right corner as well. Now we have caster, camber, and toe, right? Same thing with the values here. Our big number indicate where we are on the spectrum here with our numbers, delta being the difference between both sides for a camber and caster. And now we have our toe down here as well. Freeze works exactly the same as it does on the rear. So does our photos. And then we have this total button here. And if we click that, the toe on the right hand changes to steer ahead. And what this is, is for vehicles with a solid front suspension, such as four wheel drives that have a drag link to adjust the steering wheel, this mode may be necessary so that when you're making adjustments, you don't see both sides move. If you want to go back to normal, just click the total one more time and our toe value goes back to what it was before. And you also have the option to re-swing caster if at any point you remove the wheel or would like to re-swing caster to take another reading. Once we made our corrections, we can go ahead and click the next button. And now we arrive at this page. Now, this thick black line in the middle divides the before adjusting versus after adjusting. So this is how the car came in on the left and this is how it's leaving on the right. Now we didn't make any corrections here, so most of the values have stayed the same, okay? Front divided, the blue line divides the rear. And then we have our notes page here, as we saw earlier, to input any kind of information you want to include on the printout or to save it later into the customer database. We have our print, so if you'd like to print it out at this point to give to the customer, you can print it or to keep for your records. And the save button here will save this vehicle into the customer data bank. And lastly, once we hit next, brings us to the home menu and the process is not complete. So that's how to use the DWA 1000 wheel alignment system by CHEM USA. If you have any further questions, you can contact technical support at 678-717-1050.